So for today's video, I think I'm going to go over five different example problems for pendulums, and we're going to be using the conservation of energy, kinetic and potential energy to solve these problems. Now, please don't forget before I get started to subscribe to my channel, get all my excellent physics, chemistry, and math videos. That's step-by-step -step science. I've also made some additional videos which you can link to in the upper right-hand corner of this video concerning pendulums, period, frequency, explanations, all that kind of good stuff. So let's get started. Like I said we have five different problems that we want to get through. The first one here says that there's a pendulum with a length of 3.10 meters. It has a mass of 0 0.45 kilograms. It's pulled back, so there's a change in height of 0 0.75 meters. And we want to know what is the maximum velocity that the pendulum is going to have. We want to know what is its period and what is its frequency going to be. Now, don't forget, we're going to use conservation of energy. This, period, this pendulum is going to have a change in height of 0 0.75 meters. That's the height from the position at the equilibrium position to the maximum displacement. And don't forget we have conservation of energy, which for a pendulum basically tells us that the total mechanical energy, the, the, uh, the sum of the potential and the kinetic energies is always going to remain the same. And we have the greatest potential energy when it's at its greatest displacement. We have the greatest kinetic energy when it's at its lowest position or as it swings through the equilibrium position. And we know through conservation of energy that the sum of the potential and the kinetic in the initial position, so we could call this the initial position here, so we're going to pull it back and release it, and then we're going to say that that will be equal to the kinetic and the potential energy final, which the final position is down here. We're going to be comparing these two locations, and we're going to find the maximum velocity, which is here at the equilibrium position. So we know uh, from this equation that the kinetic energy is zero when it has greatest displacement and the potential energy is zero when it has greatest velocity. So we can say those two terms are zero and then we have the potential energy initial is going to be equal to the kinetic energy final, initial and final. All right. Now we know that the we're looking for the velocity, and the velocity is here inside the kinetic energy equation. So we want to set these two equal to each other as we have. We want to solve for the velocity. Now, in order to solve for the velocity, we're going to do a couple steps here. But first of all, we have the mass, and so the masses are the same because it's the same pendulum. We can cancel those masses, and that leaves us that g. Uh, the acceleration to gravity times h, because potential energy is mgh, is going to be equal to one half. The velocity squared. Now we're going to go to the next slide and solve for the velocity. We're going to multiply by 2, and we're then going to get that it's v squared is 2gh, and then we get v when we take the square root of both sides, and we get the velocity of the pendulum is equal to 2, the square root of 2 times g times h. Now I think it's interesting to notice that the mass is not in here, as we explained in the previous video, the first video. Mass does not affect the velocity of the pendulum. So we're just going to plug the values in. We know that 2 is 2. G is 9.81 meters per second squared. We'll assume we're on Earth if we doesn't say something else. And then the change in the height is 0 0.75 meters. And we end up with a velocity as it swings through its equilibrium position. The maximum velocity is 3.84 meters per second squared. Okay? So that is problem number one. Now number two says, oh, we want to, that's right, for number one, we also find the period and the, and the frequency, excuse me. So the equation for the period is simply uh, t equal to 2 times pi times the square root of L over g, the length over g is not the mass. Please don't forget that's not the g mass in grams or something like that. That is the acceleration due to gravity. I did go over the derivation of this equation in the, uh, one of the previous videos, which you can link to, as I said, in the upper right-hand corner of this video. But that's the equation for the period, and you just get that it's 2 times pi times the square root of the length, which is 3.10 meters, divided by the acceleration due to gravity, which is 9.81 meters per second squared. And if you do that, you get that the period of that pendulum is 3.53 seconds. And as we talked about earlier, we know that the period and the frequency are inversely proportional to each other, and that means the frequency is 1 over t, and that is simply 1 over t being the period, 1 over 3.53, and you get that the frequency is 0 0.28 hertz. Hertz is uh, the uh, cycles per second, and that means we have a, like a quarter of a cycle every second. Okay, now I think that 
is question number one. Okay, question number two says, Allison is at the park swinging on the swings. Swing on the swings. She has a mass of 37 kilograms, and she has a speed of 7.5 meters per second as she passes through the equilibrium position. So her speed or her velocity at this position right here is 7.5 meters per second. And we want to know what is her maximum kinetic energy, and we also want to figure out to what height she's going to swing. All right? So we know that the first part is pretty straightforward because it's just figuring out her kinetic energy. We know that the maximum is at the bottom here. Zero here when it's at the displacement, and then zero at the bottom, so it's just one-half mv squared, which is just one-half 37 times 7.5 meters per second squared. Don't forget to square just the velocity, not the whole thing or anything like that. And you get that her kinetic energy is 1,040 joules. Now, we want to know to what height she's going to swing, and we already talked about this. The kinetic energy, which is her kinetic energy, is going to be equal to the potential energy at the top. So we can say that um, the kinetic energy is going to be equal to the potential energy because we want to find her change in her height. And let's see, we know that the kinetic energy is therefore going to be equal to mgh. Now, this is not kinetic energy. This is not the equation for the kinetic energy. But you can see we substituted the potential energy equation in. And the kinetic energy is going to be equal to the potential energy. That's the kinetic energy at the bottom is equal to the potential energy at the maximum displacement. And that means that h is going to be equal to, because we can just take this equation now and solve for h. We can uh, just divide by m and g m times g, and we get the kinetic energy, uh, h is kinetic energy divided by uh, the mass times the acceleration due to gravity, and we get that that is 1,040 joules, which we got from the previous slide, divided by her mass, which is 37 kilograms, times 9.81 meters per second. Don't forget g is the acceleration due to gravity, and you get that her change in height is 2.87 meters. Okay? So, uh, yeah, there you go. That's her uh, 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 kinetic energy and her height. Okay, now we have number three, and this is a pendulum, and the pendulum has a mass of 10 kilograms, and when it passes through the equilibrium position, it has a kinetic energy of so many joules, 265 joules, and we want to know what is its velocity going to be at the equilibrium position. Okay, now we kind of did this one something similar to this already, but we know that the kinetic energy is equal to one-half mv squared. And we are given the kinetic energy and the mass, so we want to solve for the velocity. So we're just going to rearrange this equation for the velocity. And that means we're going to multiply by 2 to get rid of the one-half. And so we have 2ke on the left and mv squared on the right. Now we want to get v by itself, so we're going to divide by m. And I think I switched this over, so now it's v squared is equal to 2ke divided by m. We don't want v squared, of course. We want the velocity, so we're going to take the square root of both sides. And then we get the velocity equal to the square root of 2ke over m. Okay, and therefore we're going to then substitute those values in. That's the velocity equal to the square root of 2 times 6.65. 265 joules, and we divide that by 10, and we come out with a velocity of 7.28 meters per second squared. Okay, that is question number three. Now, this is the pendulum is uh, has been used probably for the longest time in grandfather clocks. Grandfather clock or a pendulum clock was kind of the most precise uh, timepiece until they came up with quartz clocks. So that was a long time, and the quartz clocks, I think, are just from the 19th century here, <clears throat> or the 20th century, excuse me. Okay, so this is a pendulum in a grandfather clock, and has a mass, the pendulum has a mass of 1.75 kilograms, and the change in height as the pendulum, as it swings back and forth, is only 4.5 centimeters. We want to know what is the maximum kinetic energy of the pendulum. Okay, and then uh, you should kind of get a sense now that, okay, this is a height and this is a mass, so we don't have the times. So we can't calculate the kinetic energy directly, but we do have enough information to calculate the potential energy, and we know that the kinetic energy at the bottom is going to be equal to the potential energy at the top. So we can calculate the potential energy here, then we'll know what the kinetic energy is here because it says the maximum. So we're going to calculate the maximum potential energy. Uh, 
potential energy just being mgh, the mass times the acceleration due to gravity, times h. And then you plug those values in and you get 1.75 kilograms. You get 9.81 meters per second squared again. And then you get 0 0.045 meters because you got to convert this dividing by 100 uh, uh, two places over to cut the number of meters. All right. So that is that. And then you end up that the potential energy is just 0 0.77 joules. Now that's the potential energy here. And we know when the pendulum swings all the way through that the potential energy here is going to be equal to the kinetic energy at the bottom. And that's where the maximum velocity is going to be or the maximum kinetic energy is going to be. So we know that that is also what the kinetic energy is at the bottom, potential energy here at the top. And we also just want to point out that the total mechanical energy, which is the sum of the two, is always going to be equal to 0 0.77 joules also. So you'll notice the maximum potential energy the maximum kinetic energy and the total mechanical energy at any point in the swing are all have the same value like that. Okay, I think we have one more. Uh, you could maybe say this is like the challenge question. Okay, so this is a situation where we have a pendulum. We're not going to be having it at the maximum position, whether it's the maximum displacement or the maximum velocity, the maximum kinetic energy, maximum potential energy. It's somewhere here in the middle. But we do know that at this point, the pendulum has a change in height from the equilibrium position of 0 0.35 meters. And we know at this position also that it currently has a velocity of 7 meters per second. And we want to know what is the maximum kinetic energy of the pendulum below. Now, the maximum kinetic energy is going to be here at the bottom. And that's going to be the total mechanical energy. But that the total mechanical energy, as we just said, will be the same anywhere. And it will be the same for the kinetic energy at the bottom and the potential energy at the top. So we're going to calculate the total mechanical energy, which will give us the maximum kinetic energy. And to do that, we just have to add up the kinetic and the potential. We've got to calculate those separately. Because at this point, the uh, pendulum has some potential energy and it also has some velocity, so it has some kinetic energy. Previous problems, we always looked at, okay, where is it with the maximum potential or the maximum kinetic? But anywhere it swings, the potential energy, uh, excuse me, the, the total mechanical energy will always be the same, and that value will be equal to the maximum potential and the maximum kinetic. Okay, so we have 1 half mv squared equals mgh. That equals mgh, but the kinetic energy is equal to 1 half mv squared plus mgh. And then we can just plug those values in. Now, I left most of the units off. I should have left that one off just for consistency, but I left most of them off for space. This is 1 half is 1 half, 0 0.5. The mass is 2.5. The uh, change in the height, excuse me, the velocity over here is 7, and you got to make sure you square just the 7. Then you have the mass again, and then you have acceleration to gravity, and then you have the change in the height, which we have at this point. And we get that, I just did that solution step here, is 61.25 plus 8.58 joules. And you get that the maximum kinetic energy is 69.8 joules. Now that's at that point right there, but the maximum would be here. But we also know that it's going to have the maximum, the maximum potential energy here will also be 69.8. The maximum kinetic will be down here at 69.8. And then also anywhere on its path, the total mechanical energy will be 69.8 joules, just like that. Okay, so I think that's a good uh, broad range of example questions for solving those kinds of problems for velocity and height and energy for um, pendulums using conservation of energy. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you found the video helpful. If you did, please do all the following four things. Subscribe to my channel, Step by Step Science. You can click on the notifications bell. Uh, you can give me a thumbs up. You can please leave me a comment for this video, please, very much. I appreciate knowing what people think of the videos. And I guess the fifth thing is don't forget, sharing is caring. Share this video with all of your friends. Show them just how much you care. Thank you so much. We'll see you in the next video video.